In the place of prayer, you receive revelation. And when that revelation comes, you begin to do according to the precept that was shown you. That's what Jesus said. The miracles that you see me get is because I do what I see my father do. So in the place of prayer, he is receiving revelation for the work. He writes it down and he comes and do what God shows him to do. Faith without work is dead. Glory does not just happen. You prepare for glory. Say, so prepare me a habitation. When God anoints you, the anointing will lead you to preparation. Because without preparation, there will be no glorification. God has commissioned Apostle Claude Azangisa to spread the fire in presence of the Holy Spirit in the heart of every young person, making Christ the ultimate personality in their life. Get set for a word that will set your heart on fire for God and grant you dominion over the affairs of life. Now, Apostle Claude Azangisa. Romans chapter 14 verse 17 let's read it together one two three go no 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 let's wait for some people let's wait for some people are you are we all there one two three go but righteousness peace in the holy ghost it is for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but it is what righteousness and we know what righteousness is we learned what righteousness is today i'll just want you to write down these brief definitions of righteousness to help guide you in some directions so that i'll be able to properly establish the thoughts that the holy ghost gave me hallelujah prophet mimshak i love you so much i love you so much and once again my wife i love you so much I just love my wife. Oh God. Oh, fuck. Which kind of love be this year? I never seen before. See, see, you are the one that I love. And I'm not going to hear what you did. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, it will be very important if you can write this down. Righteousness is the nature of God planted in a man that gives him boldness or put it this way righteousness is the nature of god imparted or implanted into our human spirits righteousness is the nature of god implanted in our human spirit that gives us boldness to stand before god without any sense of guilt or inferiority so righteousness is the nature of god planted in our human spirit that gives us the ability to stand before god without any sense of guilt or inferiority have you seen, you know there are some people who don't have the boldness to call god father in fact the jews they stone jesus when he called god father you see righteousness is the nature of god it is god's own nature that he gives unto you that gives you boldness to stand before god without any sense of guilt or inferiority that's why you can say god is my father and you won't feel the pain or the guilt you won't feel bad about it because of the nature of righteousness when that nature is not inside you you will see god like one abstract being you will see god like some you will you, you'll be afraid to even call god You'll be afraid. you feel intimidated by God. The unbelievers, they are intimidated by God. They are intimidated. They feel like, hey, God, you have to, God is, you know, if you sin, you have to go and wash yourself 50 times and come back. In fact, when you finish sinning, you can't even lift up your hands again. You feel like you have to confess, confess your sin one million times, you know, before God can forgive you. But righteousness, it is the nature of God implanted in your spirit that functions in the capacity that gives you boldness so you are no longer afraid of god you are no longer afraid of god you have the boldness to call god father we cry about father when you receive righteousness you cannot tell yourself i'm a child of god not everybody can say i'm a child of god do you believe what i'm saying go 
and tell your, your, your other friends that are on the other road, on the, on, the, on the other side of the road. Tell them that you are a child of God. In fact, you will be afraid to even tell them because you know what they will think. But what gives you that audacity to look at God and say, God is my father? It is a nature of righteousness that works inside you. So righteousness is the nature of God imparted in our human spirit that gives us access. That gives us the boldness. That's what the Bible says. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Not everybody can come boldly before, before the throne of grace. But you can walk in and say, Father, thank you. When you pray, you can say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Not many people have that boldness to do that. They have to beg God. Lord, we your humble servants. But you are you on the other side. You are saying, Father, I thank you because you are my God. That boldness that you have to call him even father is because of the presence of the Holy Spirit inside you. It's because of the nature of God. Hallelujah. How many of you, you are scared of your fathers? Oh, you, are, you are not... Okay, me, I'm, I used to be scared of my dad. But how many of you, you are afraid of your... I mean, when I say afraid, I mean, you are thinking first to call him father. Like, there's that thing in thing like, is it uh, father? Or do I call him father? That fear is there. You don't have it. Because you know he's your father. You can't walk up to somebody's house and just say, that, that the, uh, this is what my teacher said. You can't do that. You don't have that boldness. That confidence is not there. Because you are not born of him. He has not given you access for that. But you can go to your own biological and say, Daddy, this is what is happening. Without even thinking of anything. The boldness is there. So that is what God did for us. Let me tell you why. Listen, when Adam sinned against God. You see, when God made Adam. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? When God made Adam. Adam was made in the image and in the likeness of God. He had the righteousness of God working in him. But after he sinned against God. And the righteousness of God was lifted from Adam. The Bible says Adam went to hide himself from God. You see, when you don't have the nature of God inside you, you don't have the boldness to stand before God. Adam lost that boldness to stand before God because the nature of God was taken away from him. He was, he was given another nature by virtue of sin. When he yielded himself to, dis, to, to walk in disobedience, his nature was changed. The nature of righteousness was lifted from the earth. And man started to hide away from God. But before then, the Bible said God used to walk. The Bible said the voice of God came walking in the midst of the garden. And Adam didn't run away. He fellowshiped with God. But after he sinned, he ran away. When God came as had before, this time Adam ran away. Because the nature of righteousness that gave him that boldness to stand before God without any sense of guilt or inferiority was removed. You see, I feel that it is important that we learn the message of righteousness because I went to a church and it was and communion was served. While communion was being served, I saw some guy, he wasn't taking communion. I said, brother, why? He said, I know what I did last night. I said, that's the reason why you should take communion. Be because communion is for the shedding of the sins. When you have God's righteousness in you. Yeah. Listen. There was a man. His name was David. You, you, you know what David did? David was a man that understood the righteousness of God. The Bible says David. <laughs> he walked into the temple of God. <laughs> and entered the holy of holies. Where the shoe bread was. He took the shoe bread. Cut it and began to eat. And gave to his friends. Because he understood his relationship with God. He had this relationship with God. You see, some of you, you can't walk into my room. When you come into my house, you're like, emoji, emoji. You stay in the parlor and sit. But there are some other people here. As they come in, daddy, <laughs> straight to my fridge. <laughs> daddy, <laughs> ah, daddy, this fridge is dry today. I say, yes. Because of relationship, they have the boldness. 
it is the same apostle Claude but their relationship differs some have I have given some my righteousness so they have the right to stand before me there's some people when they sin that's what my son said when they sin the first thing they think of calling is me hi that they have done it again yes that fear is mm, that's how God wants us to be with him having no sense of fear we are not afraid of God because that's what righteousness does it gives you boldness that's why he said come boldly before the throne of grace you don't come fearing oh god will you kill me if i come please don't kill me i won't do it again when you sin you don't go saying oh god you say father i thank you because remission has been made available for me i thank you for the blood i am you don't even go you, you, you don't even go saying father cleanse me with your blood cleanse me with your blood jesus cleanse me with your blood cleanse me lord cleanse me lord cleanse me with your blood no bible says come boldly before the throne of grace he didn't even say ask he said you come and collect mercy you listen 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 it's like your father has given you his check his checkbook you don't go asking him for the money you walk into the bank account and withdraw he says come boldly and obtain mercy that's what the righteousness does it gives you the boldness to enter the throne room and say father mercy for my sins and mercy for the sins of all my brethren all these ones who have sinned who touched things they should not touch last night i obtain mercy for them in the name of jesus because you are a son in the house righteousness gives you boldness some people you know that some people they don't have the boldness to ask god for certain things they say uh, god we god's answer is wait and uh, this no yes or no god has god has never said no anywhere in scripture the bible said his answer is yes yea and amen not no that is not the topic for today I'll explain that to you. Say, eh, eh, eh. I'll explain it to you. So righteousness gives you the boldness to walk to your daddy. Listen, you begin to see God like daddy. Not everybody can call God daddy. At times, if you see me talking with God, you think I'm talking with my, with my. How many of you have that kind of relationship with your dad? When you're talking with your dad, it's as though you're talking with your friend. That is what God wants. There was no protocol between God and Adam. No protocol. God walked into the garden. They started chatting. God Alpha. That is nice. But when sin came in, you see, sin makes you conscious of your state. Righteousness makes you conscious of God, of who He has made you. That Adam he ran away because God's righteousness was removed from him. Now, after Adam sinned, they now had to obtain righteousness because without righteousness, you cannot have fellowship with God. So, what did God do? God gave them the law. So, as they walked in the law, they walked in the righteousness of God. But the Bible said the law was not perfect. Not that the law, yeah, the law was not perfect. The law was good, but it could not function properly because of the weakness of the human flesh. Praise the Lord. So God did something. Man had to walk through the laws of, of the commandment to access righteousness. But Jesus Christ came and obeyed all the laws and obtained eternal righteousness. And he now took righteousness and gave it to us as a gift. So when you come into Christ, the first thing he gives you is righteousness. Righteousness is a gift that God gives unto you to have. So you are righteous not by virtue of what you do or what you do not do. You are righteous by virtue of the gift of God. Say, I'm righteous. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3, a 
except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, when you are born again, you are born into the kingdom of God. And one thing that the kingdom of God offers unto you is righteousness. Can we look at the scriptures to see it? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Wash me with your blood, Jesus. I am washed by the blood. I'm sanctified. Listen, the prayer of washing me with your blood is not necessary. You don't pray it. Let me give you a high revelation. The Bible says, as we have fellowship one with another, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So as you are here, a cleansing is taking place. That's why after moving from this place, you start feeling like you can ask God for anything now. You start feeling so fresh. Your boy looks so fresh. Second uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 5. Are you there? Look at verse 21. For he had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made. Oh. That we might what? Be made what? The righteousness of God. Have you been made the righteousness of God? Are you righteous? Are you righteous? Say, I'm righteous. righteous. Yesterday, I went to a place and asked, how many of you are righteous? I did like this. I said, we are not righteous. I said, no, you are righteous. Because righteousness is the gift of God's nature that has been implanted in your human spirit. The day you got born again, your nature was changed. You were given the nature of righteousness. That's why you can say, hallelujah, you can dance anyhow freely. Because of the nature of God that gives you boldness. Praise the Lord. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 13. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and what righteousness praise the Lord let me finish that <laughs> but of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness sanctification and redemption listen your sanctification is in Christ meaning the day you step into Christ you became sanctified so Christ is your sanctification and Christ is your redemption. Praise the Lord. You look too dull for my liking. Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'm coming today. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I just wanted to establish this thought. I'm getting there, don't worry. I know where you want me to go. So he said the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness. Let me give you another definition of righteousness that will blow your mind. <laughs> I like this one. Ah, D is very good. You like this one, <laughs> Sylvia? You will love this one. You will love this one, Tasha. You will love this one. You will love it. You will love it. You will love it. Righteousness. Is the manifestation of God's perfect will, purpose, and plan. Is the manifestation of God's perfect will, his purpose, and his plan over a person, a place, or a thing. Righteousness is the manifestation of God's perfect will, his perfect plan, and purpose. Righteousness is the manifestation, is the, is, the, is, the, is the revealing of God's perfect plan. His purpose over a thing, a person or a place. Now, last week I told you something. Praise the Lord. Are you, I need your attention. Those of you who are on WhatsApp, social media, Instagram, Go on flight mode now so that you will not be distracted. Don't let anybody text you on WhatsApp. On what, just be disciplined in the house of God kindly. Just put off your social media. It's just for a while. Yeah? It's just for a while. Please. 
Put your phone on slide mode. Don't pick up any call right now, okay? Don't pick up any call right now. Just have reverence for God's presence. So don't pick up any call. Don't reply any message. Just for a few minutes and then you'll go home. And you'll reply all the messages that you want to reply. Praise the Lord. So I said righteousness is the manifestation of God's perfect will. His plan and purpose. It's the manifestation of God's perfect will. His plan and his purpose. Over a person, a place, or a thing. Now, last week I said righteousness is the rightness of God. It is, it is, it is the divine plan of God. It is the will of God over a thing. It is what God has destined a thing to be. Look at me. Righteousness is what God has destined a thing to be. If God has destined this phone to be black, and maybe this phone falls into, into ink, some red ink, and it comes out red, it has fallen out of righteousness. Because it has lost the shape, it has lost the color, the texture, the format of what God planned it to be. So the righteousness of God, it is the ordination of God's plans and purposes. So God planned this phone to be black. But something happened and the phone lost its composure. It lost its stature. It lost what it was supposed to be. Praise the Lord. Now, if God's righteousness, see, righteousness now, it is the power of God that works in a thing that converts it to become again what God destined it to be. Praise the Lord. So when the right, when this phone was black, but because of something, it fell inside the water, inside an ink, and it became red. When the power of God's righteousness hits the phone now, it will recalibrate the phone. It will change its state again from what it was changed to become to what it was supposed to be. It is the rightness of God. It establishes the rightness of God. Righteousness establishes the will of God. It is the revelation of God's perfect will. The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness. Meaning the first gift the first thing that the kingdom of God has is righteousness. So meaning, when you come, when you find yourself into the kingdom of God, the first thing that happens to you, your life takes a turn. <sighs> because of righteousness. <sighs> oh, Zambi Sandi Sanda. Let me show you something. Go to Psalm 67. Ah. Tell somebody, Apostle Paul loves his wife. If you don't tell somebody, then you are jealous. As you tell your neighbor, Apostle Paul loves his wife, your wife will locate you. Your husband will locate you. In fact, I establish blessings right now. As you tell your neighbor, Apostle Claude loves his wife, a blessing will locate you. You know what I'm doing? I'm teaching the young men in this house to always appreciate their wives.
at all times appreciate them. Hallelujah. If you have a lady that you see that you want her to be your wife in the future, learn to appreciate her always. 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 Keep telling her, baby, you're so beautiful. Chidi, I know Chidi does that every time. Praise the Lord. He's, he's a professional. Psalm 67, verse 2. Psalm 67, verse 2. I want to show you something. Shalom, are you cold? You're about to get hot now. Psalm 67, verses 2. Psalm 67, verses 2. <laughs> now, I said righteousness is the rightness of God. Right? What's your name? Aminata. Oh, yes, Aminata. God bless you, my dear. God bless you. I'm happy to see you. Really happy. Praise the Lord. Now, I said righteousness is the rightness of God. Right? Psalm 67, verse 2. It says, that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Now, if you read this from the King James, you won't really get it. So who has an Amplified Bible here? So who has the Living Bible? I know you have Amplified. I need the Living Bible. You have it here? Please, let's look at it from the Living Bible. I'm about to start. I'm about to enter something right now. Tell your neighbor, get ready, he's about to fly. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. As you've given me this phone like this, your wife is coming speedily. Hallelujah. Speedily. Speedily. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to all the young men in this place to get married just like me. You know, I, I open an awake marriage page. Only me and my wife, we are, we are, we are there for now. <laughs> we, we are a little bit bored. <laughs> we want some other couples to come and join us. You guys are wasting time. Hurry up. In fact, I'm going to fast forward marriage in this ministry. But not teenagers. No teenagers are going to marry now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Psalm 67 verse 2 from the Amplified, so, sorry, from the Living Bible. Look at it. It says, send us, round the, send us around the world with the news of your saving power and your eternal plan for all mankind. Have you seen that? It says, send us around the world with the news of your saving power and your eternal plan. I said righteousness is the divine plan of God over a person. So there is a plan of God over Gambia. There is the righteousness of God over Gambia. God has destined Gambia to become somehow. There is a divine ordination of Gambia. Listen. God spoke to a man, his name was Jeremiah. He said, before you were born, I ordained you to be a prophet. So there are people who have been ordained to become certain, to, to become something, but they are not. You see, the righteousness of God is the revelation of the plan of God. What God has destined you to be. If you read, I think in Psalm... Where did I write this Psalm? Psalm 139, verse 16. I need a fast reader, somebody who can open it up quickly. Psalm 139, verse 16. I want to show you something. Psalm 139, verse 16. If you're there, please read it. Praise the Lord. Have you seen that? It says, In your book, all the days of my life were what? He says, in your book, what? All the days of my life. Listen, your life was written before you were born. Listen, what's today's date? 
if he said, all the days, mean the 12th of May, it was written, God wrote, God orchestrated certain happenings. That there are things that were supposed to happen for me in this month, this day. So the right choices of God is the revelation of the plans of God. It's the rightness of God. It is the things that a man has been destined to become in God. The righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. David, all my days we are written. No wonder in Psalm 23, he said, he leads me in the path of righteousness. There is a path of righteousness. There is a path where God has written that on the 15th of January, Apostle Alex was supposed to be a millionaire. It is written in the book of God. But Apostle Alex walks into that 15th of January and he's not. The righteousness of God has not taken shape. This is what David meant when he says, send us around the world with the news of your saving grace and your eternal plan for all man. There are some people by now, they were supposed to be married. Ten years ago, they were supposed to be married. Because it was written. There are some people by now, they're not supposed to be in Gambia. Because ten years ago, it was written by God. Listen, the fact that God said you will become something does not mean you will become it. Between you and your prophecy, there is something you're supposed to do. Righteousness is activated. You activate righteousness. What is righteousness? It is the divine purpose of God over my life. Whom God has planned me to become. There are some people, God planned they will become doctors, but today they are thieves in the street. Sitting now smoking weed. But in God's purpose, an angel encountered a man. His name was Jacob. But in the plan of God, his name was not Jacob. In the righteousness of God, his name was not Jacob. His name was Israel. His destiny took the wrong turn. Righteousness was not established in his life. He was walking, he was not walking in the path of righteousness until God appeared and brought him in the path of righteousness. Listen, how do you walk in righteousness? Is God that leads you in the path of righteousness. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can walk in righteousness because it is the Holy Ghost that knows the plans of God concerning a man. And he reveals them to us. But Jacob, he encountered God and he wrestled with God. You know what that thing means? To wrestle with God? Let me tell you. Righteousness will not just happen. You have to wrestle. That's why the Bible says these are the generation of them that seek him. You see, righteousness, you seek it because it is the written plans of God about your life. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Jacob, he wrestled with God. What was he doing? You see, that wrestle was misinterpreted. It does not mean that he was fighting with God. He was making supplication. He was seeking God. And God told him, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. Wrong. God told him, no. He said, God asked him, what's your name? He said, my name is Jacob. The angel went to check the heavenly database and said, your name is not there. He said, but my name is, is Jacob. He said, we don't know. We don't have any record of Jacob there in heaven. Then the angel helped him. He said, your name is not Jacob. He said, your name is Israel. When he became Israel, when he became Israel, the righteousness of God was activated. And you know what the Bible says about righteousness? It says, they that receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, they shall reign in life. Righteousness has an automatic reigning power because in the plan of God, he has made you to reign over situations and circumstances. Because you are not working in righteousness, 
you are not reigning. He has written your life before you were born. He wrote your marriage before you were born. He wrote your finances before you were born. And you know what the Bible says? It says glorious things are written of thee. God did not write small things about you. He wrote glorious things about you. But you can only have access to those things when the Holy Ghost begins to, un begins to unveil them to you and you begin to walk in them. So righteousness is the character of God's plan for a man's life. When Adam sinned against God, he lost righteousness. He could no longer access the plans of God. Can I show you a, a mystery? I may not have the time to open to, but it's in Genesis chapter 2. What happened? After God made Adam, look at this, look at this, look at me. Don't miss me here. After God made Adam, praise the Lord, God made Adam in his image and in his likeness. Meaning the likeness of God is righteousness. God is righteous. So meaning Adam had the righteousness of God. He had access into the will and purpose of God. He had access to make things right the way God ordained them to be. To be righteous means to have the power to make things the way God has ordained them to be. You do the right thing at the right time. When a man is righteous, he does not go wrong. Now, righteousness... When a man is righteous, he does righteous things. Now, righteous things does not mean uh, I didn't lie, I didn't cheat, so I'm doing what is right. It's not righteousness, it's not in the context of right or wrong with regards to I did that, I did that. No. It's in the context of God's will for your life. The things that God has ordained you to do and to be. In the right Justness of God is written concerning you that you shall be the head and not the tail. So when you discover that righteousness and you activate that power, it begins to make you the head. Because righteousness is the power that makes you become who God has destined you to be. And he has made you the head. So everywhere you go, you are the head because of the righteousness of God. In God's righteousness, the Bible says, their land shall be married. There shall be no barren in the land. So meaning there should be no child of God that is not married. But you know that there are people who go through situations in their life where the devil manipulates their destinies. The devil can manipulate your destiny. He can interfere. And before you know it, what you are supposed to be, you are not it. The right just takes you out of the path of righteousness. So you now see yourself, instead of you to become a millionaire, you are struggling on job. But you are a you are a prince that has found power with God. Hallelujah. He put to the man, before you were born, I ordained you to be a prophet. Hallelujah. That's the righteousness of God. He says, send us around the world with the news of your saving grace and your eternal plan. See, there's a plan of God over my life. Yeah, there's a plan, there's a plan. God has written something about my life and it's glorious. But how are those things? You see, you see I was saying in Genesis chapter 2, something happened. When God made that and, um, uh, um, 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 uh, Adam, Adam was made in the likeness of God, meaning he had the access to the mind of God to know the things that God has planned them to be. Hallelujah. So what did God do? God told Adam to name all the animals. Praise the Lord. Adam's assignment, listen to me, Adam's assignment was to name. You see, how do you establish righteousness? You establish righteousness by calling things that be as though they were. The Bible says he called things that be not as though they were. You establish righteousness by calling things that be that be not as though they were. What does that mean? You see, I'll show you some mysteries today. Adam, when he got to the first animal, he said, Cut. He was not coining their names. Because in the book of God, the animal was called Cat. But you see, that cat could not function on earth because it was not yet named. 
To name a thing means to establish it. The cat was there, but it didn't take form. It didn't take establishment. Its destiny was not activated because there was nobody to establish righteousness. Our assignment is to establish the righteousness of God in the earth. That's why when we say your kingdom shall reign, it means that we are establishing the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? It's righteousness. When I come into a life, I establish righteousness. Meaning this man was not supposed to be sick. But the man is sick. But in the book of God, he's not sick. In the heavenly realms, the man is walking. But in earth, the man is crippling. What do I do? I have access to see who God has made him in the spirit. And I establish him by calling him who God has made him to be. So I say, walk. And he begins to walk you establish righteousness by calling things that be not as God the bell. so in the physical realm there was a cat but the cat was not functioning well it could not function until Adam had to come and call it what it is called in the heavens that's what Jesus meant when he said thy will be done Thy will be done on earth. What is the will of God? I said righteousness is the manifestation of the will and the purpose of God. So the will of God, this man is rich. But in the earth he's not. In the will of God, this man is a bank manager. But he's still a student. In the will of God, this lady... She is a businesswoman traveling all over Ethiopia, all over Gambia, all over Nigeria, all over Ghana, but she's still sitting down. In the will of God, this young man, he's an entrepreneur, he's a friend of Bill Gates, but physically, who are his friends? Listen, do you know, I was Alex, I, I, I asked who is his friend? I was always a policeman. <laughs> yeah. Can I go deeper? Can I go deeper? Do you know that in God's righteousness, He has even planned your relationships? There are people that God has destined to be in your life. In His righteousness, He saw that in, he saw that in the year 2019 that Apostle Claude had to be married. So he planned the right person. And the Bible says, the steps of the righteous. Listen, there's something called righteous steps. What are righteous steps? Righteous steps are those steps um, when a man begins to walk, he's walking in destiny. When I meet this person, I just didn't meet him. It was written that Apostle Claude was going to meet Cecilia. So I walked in destiny. The steps of the righteous. They are what we call righteous steps. When a man is walking righteously, it doesn't mean that he's walking sentimoniously. When a man is walking righteously, it means he's walking in destiny and purpose. Because righteousness is the effulgence of God's purpose and will. So in God's righteousness for my life, Cecilia's name was there. That's why all the other names that I met, they all faded. Because they were not in God's righteousness for my life. Listen, when you begin to speak in tongues, you activate righteousness. The things that are not supposed to be in your life, they begin to fall out. And the things that the people that are supposed to be in your life, they begin to find their way. Because he leads me in the path of... There are righteous steps. We are walking in righteousness. Hannah, listen, there's no fear. There's no fear. Because the Bible says, he perfects all that concerns me. Oh, he perfects. Oh, oh. Can I give you another definition of, of righteousness? Righteousness is the perfection and completion of God. There is nobody who was made without being perfected. 
My God, I need to show them. Please have your seat. Listen, everything that God made is complete. Your relationship is inside you. Your money is inside you. Listen, wisdom. The Bible says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything of ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God. Let me tell you something. When Adam was made, you see, when God made you, he perfected you. There was nothing that God was going to add in your life again because everything you need is in the path of righteousness. Your husband is not part. Your wife is not part. Your degree is not part. Your traveling is not part. Your promotion is not part. Every good thing is not part. So what the devil does, he tries to fight your understanding so you won't understand righteousness. And deceive you to believe that righteousness is this. I'm righteous. Who is a righteous man? It's a man that's walking in the perfect will of God for his life. Righteousness is the completion of God. God completed everything. When God made Adam, God created Adam's relationship and put the relationship inside Adam. Your relationships are inside you. Your marriage is inside you. That business connection that you are looking for is inside you. When you begin to activate the righteousness, they begin to locate you. They begin to gravitate towards you. When it was time for Adam to have a wife, God did not go anywhere else. Because righteousness is the completeness of God. Adam was complete. Even though the wife was not there. But in the spirit she was there. She just had to come out. Listen, the righteousness, listen, everybody is complete. And all things that you will ever need in your life, they are wrapped up inside you. They are in your path. Righteousness is the perfection of God. God made this, this is, they made this phone perfectly. That this phone won't need anything else. It has everything it needs to function. So listen, but we are living in it. I don't have time. I don't have time. Let me show you this. Go to Genesis. I don't have time. Are you enjoying this thing? Are you enjoying? Are you are you learning something? Are you learning, bro? Do you know who you are in the spirit? You see, a prophet has access to the mind of God. He comes and tells you you're supposed to be a millionaire. What is he doing? He's establishing your righteousness. He's telling you who God has made you. That's why this month is the month of testimony. When I said testimony, not of most of you didn't understand it. You think testimony is, what has God done for you? You come out, I have a testimony. It's my month of testimony. No. I said, how do you establish righteousness? By calling things that be not. By testifying. What is your testimony? Is the declaration of God's will for your life. Is that the Holy Ghost brings you into the access. Where you now have access into the written pages of your life. You know what God has said concerning you. And you begin to testify it. He has said I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that we may boldly say. When a person is sick in your body. When something is missing in your body righteousness is not there when you activate righteousness if a kidney was missing it comes back because in the plan of god god made you complete he put money in your life he put wife in your life he put husband in your life all things that you will ever need is in your path of righteousness minshak he is in my path of righteousness this man of god I don't have time, but let me just say this thing. Another way to activate your righteousness quickly is by sowing a seed. Listen, if I'm, I'm not telling you the blessing of my relationship with him today, I want you to see it one day. 
I was praying for a miracle. Then I took a seed. I sowed the seed. After I sowed the seed, all of a sudden, my life took a shift. You see, when a, what is a shift? A shift is when you have been placed, rightly placed. When you are being rightly placed, meaning you were not placed right. You are walking in a path that is not right. When I'm talking about right, right is not in the context of lying, fornication, no. It's in the context of a path that was not destined for you to be in. Abraham was not walking right because his name was Abraham. In the realm of the spirit, his name was Abraham. But he could not access the blessing. The blessing was in the path of Abraham. But he was walking in the path of Abraham. But when God shifted him after he offered the sacrifice, God shifted him from the realm of Abraham to the realm of Abraham where the promises are. After I saw the seed, God shifted my path. And in my path, Mimshak was there. But I didn't meet him. There are some of you, you are meeting the wrong people because you are walking in the wrong path. So you keep meeting the wrong guys who will break your heart. The wrong girls who will just leave you. Not that, not that you are wrong. You are walking in the path that's not for you. There is a path where God has a Cecilia for you that will stay to the end. Okay, get angry with me. It's your own business. When you get married and you have your wife and you start preaching, preach about your wife. Let me preach about my own. Leave me. I'm walking in my path of righteousness. <laughs> There's so many things to share, but times that is not on my side. Genesis too quickly. Let me show you this. I promise I was going to show you this one. Genesis 2. Let me show you this thing quickly. Genesis chapter 2. Wisdom, I love you so much. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 5. Can I show you this mystery? Look at this. I'm showing you how to activate righteousness. And every plant of the field, before it was in the earth. Okay, you know what? Go to chapter 1. <laughs> go to chapter 1 give me a high five give me a high five, give me a high five. happy to see you Genesis chapter okay this man of God they are, they've already caught the revelation they've already caught it you know, I like preaching where men of God are because it's easy to preach because they just catch it fast but you too you are catching it fast your Wi-Fi is from 2G to 4 in fact 5G speed Genesis chapter 1 let me show you verse 11 Hallelujah. Somebody's going to get a miracle tonight. Dovi, it's you. Paul, I love you so much. That's my younger brother. My, my brother. Paul, just, say, just wave your hand. That's, 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 that, that's my younger brother. That's Cecilia's younger brother. That's my brother-in-law. Hallelujah. And that's Cecilia's auntie. See, please raise your hand. Let them, let them see you. She, she, she's from the United States. She came to visit us today. I love you so much. I really appreciate it. You see, international people are coming to this place. Because I activated righteousness. In the right choices of this ministry, we have members from America, United Kingdom, China. That's our righteousness. But when I didn't activate it, I only had members from Nigeria. <laughs> All these Nigerians. <laughs> Sierra Leoneans. But when I began to speak in tongues, I said, God, activate my righteousness. Huh? Before I know it, Americans started flying into the ministry. Yeah, Americans started flying into the ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Congolese started flying in. And the British people, praise, praise, Ebube. The British people, yeah. They, they started flying in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Chinese people, Alex, Chan Chu Ha, hang a hand. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 1. Look at this keenly. Look at it keenly. Carol, Carol, look at this one. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, 
whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so verse 12 and the earth brought forth grass and help yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind god saw that it was good praise the lord have you seen that oh look at me here look at me look at me in chapter 1 11 it says that god commanded the earth to bring forth all manner of plants right and in verse 12, it says that, and the earth brought forth all manner of plants. Right? And the Bible said, God looked at it, and it was good. Right? Now, go to chapter 2. Let me show you something. Enyola, that's my new baby. A newborn baby in our ministry. That is so much on fire for God. God bless your fire. Your fire will blaze and blaze. Have you seen the Genesis chapter 2? Look at verse 5. It says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. But this is a contradiction. In chapter 1, God said that he caused the earth to bring forth plants. And the Bible said, God saw the plant. But in chapter 2, we now see that the earth, there was no plant. The Bible said, because God, there was no man to till the ground and there was no rain. So God, his, listen, in chapter 1, God created the earth. Creation takes place in the spirit realm. Meaning, when after God spoke, and said, let the earth bring forth all manner of plants. The Bible says, God saw it was there. Meaning in the spirit realm, the earth had plantation, all manner of trees. Listen, the thing just happened suddenly. Like God said, let there be trees. Boom, you just see the mango tree. Pua. No, it, it wasn't like that. The mango tree just, just didn't appear. Pua. The illegal trees, the trees. Pua. No. After God spoke in the spirit, they were there. But physically, the earth was still empty. Dry. Nothing was there. And verse 5 said, it, it was not so because look at it, verse 5. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. Before it was in the earth. Meaning they were somewhere but they were not in the earth. Your blessing is somewhere but it's not in the earth. Your husband is somewhere in the spirit but it's not in the earth. You are a modern billionaire. Your billions it is, but it's not yet in the earth. Your company it is, but it's not yet in the earth. That scholarship it is. The day you said, God give me, he gave it to you. God's word is yea and amen. The moment you ask, he gives. He's too generous. The day you said, God give me where the wife was, but she was not in the earth yet. You see, I said the right choices of God has to do with the planting of God. has to do with God's plan and will for, for us. But we have to activate it. In verse 5 it says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. So what did God do? He had to make man to till the ground. What am I saying? When God spoke and said, let there be animals, there were animals everywhere. But in the physical realm, there was no animal. Until Adam started naming them. He had access to see what God had made, has planted in this place. And he says, cut. And cut will begin to, a cut will, 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 will appear. Dog and dog shows forth. Money and money shows forth. Listen, God has restored the miracle. Listen, you and God, you are partners. God works it in the spirit. You establish it in the physical. So at the end of the day, both of you will share the glory. He, listen, he has given us to become partakers of his glory. When Jesus came, he said, I do what I see my father do. Meaning the father does it in the spirit. He just activates it in the physical. 
he had access into the righteousness of God over nations over people that's why he saw the woman that was bent over for years he said this is a seed of abraham what was he saying now because abraham was the one that had access to god's righteousness and all those that came through the lineage of abraham they had the righteousness of god through abraham meaning no one that was a seed of abraham had the right to be bent again because they had the rightness of god so when god saw a man when Jesus saw a woman who was not walking in righteousness. He had access to say, this woman is not supposed to be this way. So what does he do? He speaks a word that activates her righteousness. And that is what is going to happen this month. This month you will speak words that will activate your righteousness. I don't know what has been out of place in your life. But God is going to bring you to a place where you are going to see his plans for your life. He said glorious things are spoken concerning thee. Brothers and sisters, Let's take this last scripture and then we go. This last one. Hi. When somebody is sick, you say, no, you are not supposed to be this way. Because you have access into God's righteousness. You say, in the, it is written concerning you that you are healed. So you say, brother, you are healed. Listen, 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 listen. Alex, we don't just say you are healed. When we are saying you are healed, we know where we are talking from. We are talking from a perspective of righteousness. We have seen that God has already healed him. So we now come and say, he has already healed you, you are healed. There was a man in the Bible, his name was Anias. How was Anias healed? Anias was sick, lying down. Peter didn't even pray. He established righteousness. How do you establish righteousness? By speaking to the Holy Ghost. When Peter came to the house of Anias, he said, Anias, Jesus makes you well and the Bible says Ananias got up and he was healed instantly because Peter told him Jesus makes you well what was he saying he was saying in Christ Jesus he has made you righteous meaning all your deformities all your deformities all your limitations all your imperfections that we are taking care of in Christ Jesus and because you have not come into Christ all your limitations your deformities your sicknesses they are gone and he has made you right so when I tell you Jesus makes you well. When I say Jesus has made you rich, the Bible says he became poor. That us through his poverty might become rich. Meaning no child of God has to be poor. Because in your righteousness you are rich. But what do you need to activate it? Two things. Just two things you need. The first thing that a man needs to activate his righteousness is the Holy Spirit. I'm not a, you are righteous. You have the nature of God, the perfection of God. And you are, do you understand what I'm saying? There are some of you, you are walking in places you're not supposed to walk in. Because in God's righteousness, you are supposed to be the head. But you are crawling somewhere. But when you begin to speak, how do you activate righteousness? Listen, I've learned a way to pray. When I pray this, I pray, I say, Father, I thank you. Because the righteousness of God prevails in my life. The righteousness of God prevails. When I'm sick in my body, when, when I feel my body have gone out of order, I know that in the realm of the spirit, I'm not supposed to be feeling this pain. Because in the realm of the spirit, God has made me perfect and he has healed me already. I'm well in the realm of the spirit. In Christ, I'm well. I'm perfect. I'm whole. But physically, my body has taken a curve. So what do I do? When I say, Father... I activate your righteousness. Christ is my righteousness. All of a sudden, my body that took the shape, it begins to turn back. Because righteousness is the rightness of God. It's the power of God that brings order. There are some of you, your life is not in order. The people that are supposed to be in your life, that are supposed, some of you, you need divine help. There are people that God ordained, they were supposed to give you money. But they're not thinking about you. But when the righteousness is activated, the Bible says that night the king could not sleep. Because righteousness was activated. And the king could not sleep. He had to go into the records to look for a way to favor Esther. Because in God's righteousness, Esther is a favored one. When you begin to speak in the Holy Ghost and you begin to activate righteousness, favor begins to locate you. Men begin to come to you.
How do you activate righteousness? First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Chapter 2. Shama Elohim. Brother, sister, if you are going through a financial situation, maybe a lack of money, I want you to know that that money was prepared before. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Do you know what it means? Sissy, do you know what it means? Or do you know what God meant, Tasha, when he said, I will go before you and make the crooked path straight, plain. You know what that means? It means that God has already provided your needs ahead of time. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me, not I. He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. And then he leads me in that path. Dear saints of God, we believe this message has been a blessing to your soul. Please to share your testimony with us. Contact us on plus 220-3199330 or 3064-155 or 3321-694. You can also send us an email at arcofchange1 at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook at Arc of Change. Arc of Change Ministry, changing lives, transforming nations. Hallelujah.